Thank you, Madam Chair and Councillors. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Um, just very briefly, uh, I just wanted to share a bit of perspective uh, from the BIA side on uh, just being a part of this committee. Um, we were thrilled to participate uh, as one of the local BIAs on the CINSA committee. Um, our mission, as uh, most of you know, uh, as, as the BIA and the downtown east side, uh, centers around social innovation and community inclusion. Uh, the majority of our programs are, are focused around making that connection and building that bridge between traditional businesses and nonprofits and social enterprises. So a lot of our programming focuses around, around that uh, and is built into this plan. Uh, we're hoping that uh, the CED strategy can be an example to other communities uh, throughout the city. I know that uh, you're considering this as kind of a pilot project uh, moving forward and, and I, I do my job with the other BIAs in the city to kind of share uh, what we do uh, in the downtown east side and encourage them to uh, take on uh, similar types of uh, responsibility um, and mandates. So I'm hoping that we can be an example to, us, to the other BIAs uh, when they eventually are participating uh, in their CED strategies. Uh, we as Hastings Crossing are, are strongly in support of the strategy and its elements, uh, which include things like strengthening the employment continuing, continuum, uh, working with anchor institutions like SFU and, and Metro, uh, Port Metro, uh, and to be leaders in social hiring and purchasing and creating that uh, social procurement directory um, that was uh, talked about earlier. Um, we as a business community are also strongly in support of raising welfare rates. Um, I think that's uh, a unique uh, approach uh, or position, I guess, as a BIA taking that. Uh, that extra money in the pockets of low-income residents in the downtown east side um, really has the potential to strengthen the local economy even more. And then the major piece of this, uh, I think that most of our the business community uh, is interested in, is this series, uh, the Community Impact Real Estate Society, uh, that Wes uh, spoke about at length earlier. Moving forward with uh, this version of a commercial lease trust will really help to ensure affordable commercial space is preserved for new and existing businesses uh, that provide for the low-income community, including low-income residents and entrepreneurs. I think this is a major, major opportunity for local business, for the local business community, the low-income community, and the downtown east side community as a whole. However, I have two two comments and, and just more uh, suggestions and recommendations uh, on the lease trust specifically. Uh, one is I really, really strongly encourage the city to contribute their own properties to this portfolio. Um, I think BC Housing is coming forward with quite a few, and, and the city really, really has an opportunity to include some of their properties in this um, to build and stabilize the affordable space for social enterprises and, and low-income serving businesses in the area. And also, uh, secondly, uh, I just want to ensure that we establish as part of this very clear guidelines uh, for the requirements for the businesses that we're filling uh, these spaces with. So uh, similar to what you said, Councillor Carr, around verifying these social enterprises, social impact employers, uh, I think that's really important uh, to make sure that you know, no one is taking advantage of the system that we're setting up and that it's fair for uh, the low-income community, but also uh, existing businesses in the area. So I, I plan to continue to uh, be a part of this uh, group and, and ensure that uh, those requirements and, and things are, are followed up with and, and made uh, fair and, and equitable for everyone in the community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Floyd. I thought we had time for another speaker, but Councillor Carr has questions. Thanks for keeping it concise, though, Mr. Floyd. Thanks so much, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, I, so my only one question is around how you verify. Like, what is it, as sort of the verifiable part of it? What are, what are the measurements or indicators that you're looking for? Well, I, I think that there's there's a lot of existing uh, platforms, such as Bicycle Canada, that exists and, and already has uh, sort of a, a accreditation, if you will. Um, so I think that we can really uh, adapt from those types of programs. We also have uh, community-wise uh, through the BIA, which has kind of evolved over the years, but we encourage our businesses to participate in that, and I think it could uh, actually be a local version of, of that. So you know, if you think of like things like lead accreditation or you know anything like that, you know, there's ways to I think adapt that. But we could actually um, you know use some of the funds or, or whatever in this in this process to create that and, and you know celebrate those businesses that are. Um, in, in that way. Sounds like a 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hoyt. Thank